Good morning. Uh, thank you for having me uh, in Gamer Priority Talk Series. Uh, I would really like to thank Dr. Sai Kabrat for having me. For today's topic, I will talk about uh, some of the uh, innovative IoT and electronic solutions for the Indian land agricultural landscape. Uh, I currently work at Intel, uh, where I lead the analog design team for uh, memory interfaces, parallel memory interfaces. And uh, this particular talk is not related to my work at Intel. So this is something which I am passionate about, uh, about providing an agricultural solution. So this is done with that aim. Looking forward to a lot more discussion going forward. A quick view about me and my research, which I have uh, done and I continue to do. So, uh, I uh, as a leader, speaker, volunteer, uh, educator, and uh, nature admirer. And uh, from all of these, I hold the educationist, uh, being an educationist at a time. This allows me to give back to the society and this gives me the opportunity to lift up a lot more individuals, uh, the group in our community and ensure that knowledge is disseminated and applied when these people use it. So my research specifically uh, was built the principal applications starting with the healthcare and biomedical, sensor systems for IoT, green systems and green technology. In uh, today's talk, uh, I will probably go through uh, items related to the sensor systems for Internet of Things and green systems and green technology and see how these can be leveraged in the agricultural system ecosystem. <clears throat> but for people who are in this talk, who would like to reach out to me for not uh, items not related to these uh, IoT talk or the agriculture or regarding to any other VLSA, we are most uh, welcome. Uh, we can collaborate on uh, many activities and we can also consult for uh, VLSA based education. The website on top, uh, you can reach out to me on this website, which says uh, tiny.cc at King Consultants. Uh, for people who uh, wanted to know a little background of what I did in my research, so here is one uh, example. I did on a lab on a chip where you could do uh, gas sensing, biosensing, flow sensing, and various pressure sensing. And this sensor design background is what pulled me to uh, find an agriculture oriented solution and say what else can be done to support our uh, agroeconomy. This is a purely uh, analog and RF uh, test methodology where uh, when you build a silicon, the items on the devices which are present are placed in a substrate. The amount of loss that is experienced in that substrate, we will try and measure that and see how much of it is reliable and can be used as a early stage uh, testing measurement or an unchip test method rather than using OSCHIP. So this will help in reducing the testing cost and it also helps in reducing uh, equipment so that you are uh, you can test good components right in the early stages of the circuit design packaging and system integration next is post phd work where i worked on uh, high speed service uh, where you do high speed serial line communication on the copper traces that are present or on the cable and these are the actual communication which happens in the physical layer in the network layer that you see. It happens in ones and zeros, digital ones and zeros get moved into as analog signals, which get carried at very different speed uh, data rates. For all these uh, signals to happen, you need to have the right kind of clocking mechanism, which acts as a time uh, checker. You will use this clocking to sample the data or also transmit the data at the desired frequencies. So a lot of PLL work, DLL work, uh, multi-phase DLL, uh, all that can be brought up. I think uh, this uh, Internet of Things has been spoken about extremely widely in the last five years. And 
there is a definition which I would like to bring across and take you on a journey saying, how can inanimate objects or non-electronic objects be connected to the internet and how can we utilize that? The easiest way is uh, tether one of these devices to an IP, uh, the IP to the uh, device, create an IP address, and with that IP address, if you are able to connect from any other IP address, that means you are connected to the internet world, and that allows you to go forward. So this would be the internet of things, where it's a connected world, and this is internet of everything, where any object, if it can be made electronic or attached to an electronic device for its operation, can be used under this umbrella. There is one important thing which everybody has to understand that uh, Internet of Things is actually like a feedback system. You sense something, based upon what you sense, you create a logic, decision logic, decide what to do, and then you have an actuator. <clears throat> that means that does the work, right? So you have a sensor, decision logic, and an actuator. So this is what is your uh, subject that happens. Now, what do you uh, what do you look at it? What are the earlier things that you can look for? First thing is where agriculture is utilized. First thing you would like to test is what is the moisture, humidity, temperature, water flow, position. Uh, of the objects, where are there are any leaks? Okay, so these are the most common checks that you can do. Second, you can do chemical sensors to find out if there are new chemical signatures in the farm field. This could be used for disease detection, crop health, and additional. There are some items like the magnetic acceleration, ambient vision, which are not directly used in an agricultural perspective. This is very, very important because now it is what is called the bring up. The way you bring these items up, it is called the digital convergence. What does this mean? The sensors are on the bottom of the pyramid, right? This is the funnel. and the bottom of the funnel, you will have your sensors. These are the basic devices that you will sense. After sensing this device, you will take it to the next stage where you will try and assess what is the data. So that would be your first platform. After doing the data, you go to a second platform where you do analysis of the data, where you find out what can be done, how can be done, what are the applications that are to be done. This is here where the entire community will be needed. The human population will be needed, infrastructure will be needed, data check will be needed, and that you cover all of these. Now, after this data is done, you use this data to feedback come and test back again into the system and see what changes can you do or what adaptation can you do to ensure that data is available and it makes sense to you and make changes in the process flow of the uh, agricultural ecosystem. Once you are enabling that, this is where the most of the startups are currently doing, where they are enabling the people. After they enable a solution, they come to the business ecosystem where they try and monetize their business and take it forward. Finally, they come up and discuss that this is the technology that we are able to use and show that the complete industry can be integrated. So in this case, you can see uh, robotics can be used, security will be used, data analysis will be used, uh, Internet of Things will be used to cover all of these. And majorly, there will be a lot of communication also, uh, short distance and long distance communication for control. So this gives the overall bottom-up picture that you look at and how you can see what are the transformation that the industry is going through. And this is going to be a continuous transformation. It's like an evolution in the business. Next, we will look at what are the various sensors that are uh, directly applicable in the agricultural ecosystem. An accelerometer or gyroscope is used for motion sensing. What is motion sensing? Motion sensing, you might ask, where do we use? Easiest place to use it, put it in a field. And when you are not expecting anybody to be there, and if somebody moves, that sensor will detect and tell you. 
So this could be a physical movement sensor where you do a check, which can be on a mobile device, or you can use camera also as a motion sensor, which will detect activity and say, there is some activity here. Is it expected or not expected? That feedback can be given. Next uh, is a combination. It's a very trifecta. Uh, it's also called a multi uh, integrator or multiple sensors platform. One would be the pressure sensor, flow sensor, and temperature. Now, pressure and flow go hand in hand with temperature because when you have a good pressure sensor and a temperature sensor associated with it, you can really combat and take applications based on uh, your farm's temperature or the water pressure that you can get, how much the control that you can do, uh, irrigation, etc. Next is level sensors. Level sensors are fairly simple. You want them to measure what is the quantity of a liquid in any tank or a container. So you can use uh, capacitive or resistive sensors based on what is available to know the level. This can be commonly used in uh, tanks that are present, overhead tanks to know what is the water level. Storms, underground storms where water is present, what is the checks? Chemical containers, where these chemicals are stored. What is the levels and sense and this. This all we can use for predictive work and also take it forward. Finally, is the air quality sensor. Air quality sensor is really needed in not only the agricultural economy, but also to understand the city pollution system, where you can understand what is the air quality of various concentrates of uh, carbon, nitrogen, and sulfur. As an electronic student, it is very simple. The output that you get from these sensors will either be a voltage or a current. And if it is a current, you can drop it across a resistor and you get a voltage output. And then you can sample this value using an ADC and go take it into a digital domain. So this allows you to do a plethora of activities and a lot of companies are doing working on it. What are the, some of the other sensors that you uh, my most uh, relevant sensor that I use is uh, a tachometer. Tachometer is sometimes used to measure what are the pump set uh, RPMs. You can understand for the predictive health of pump set when you're doing in the farm where you are remotely present, or there is a low voltage scenario, then the RPM on the tachometer can be a very, very good option to check whether it is most efficient way of condition to run the motor or do you not need to run the motor? That is one thing. Second uh, is a tactile sensor. A tactile sensor can be used for touch. So or touchless sensor where you can measure from distance. That could be great. Another is a proximity sensor that you can have. Flex sensors are getting used where you can flex the item. Uh, for example, uh, a lot of places where flex sensor used are in gloves. When you have a sensor on the glove, and you know that there is bend happening in the fingers, you understand that the sensor is uh, activated and response can be taken. And torque sensor, this is the most common sensor used in robotics where you really need to measure the torque of a particular arm or bending or mobile arm. And these are all the various sensors that are being utilized. So where are the applications that you have? Uh, accelerometers are very common used in mobile phones and if you see, the resolution and latency of this has now allowed people to use games. Another thing which allows you to control this is the drone. Depending upon what is the drone response, you can also control that on your mobile phone. So this is the a great application that you would see. Another uh, sensors that you use are the uh, optical sensors for production line. These are typically seen in the post harvest session where uh, when you're doing food processing or you're doing juicing, pickling, these kind of sensors where you want to monitor the health of the food object or you want to monitor the mechanics of the production line, you will check what are the sensors that are present. Uh, another sensor which is extremely small, extremely economical and cheap, but has a wide range of checks is the infrared sensors. These infrared sensors are present right from your uh, TV cameras, sorry, TV remotes, two very simple line detectors, people monitoring, 
and infrared can be used wherever when you want to check or the count the number of items and as they pass through the infrared sensor their shadows will allow uh, give a, a small glitch or a small signal up signal swing and that can be measured to find out the count of items what are there and this can be extremely responsive or slow so you can determine their activity depend how you can program it so uh, any questions till now regarding the uh, sensors and the technology that we use before we go forward we will continue with the uh, agricultural value chain that we have a typical agricultural value starts at the farm production stage then after production you take the do the harvesting do the transport for central area a primary process it could be either warm storage or cold storage then it goes into secondary processing where sorting of these good quality or bad quality fruits happens and the bad quality fruits are taken away to be reused as farm manure and the good quality ones are taken forward for processing further or for export or dispatch or uh, wholesale and retail markets intermediary after the secondary processing comes in into the juice making jelly making jams etc and these uh, are then take, taken into consideration and they go to the distribution packaging and handling and finally after all of these the processed and unprocessed food items go into the grocery stores into the supermarket and all to the food and beverage industries and also to all the catering uh, industry food catering food business etc mm -hmm. so if you look at every stage advanced electronics is used mechanics is used sensors are used in everything now these sensors may be connected may not be connected we have seen production lines with all these sensors before but they were all local now if you connect them to the internet with appropriate security then you have these access remotely where you can do monitoring of activity and if you understand iot enables monitoring majorly the process is already existing so it is an additive technology that we are focusing on it is mostly additive and not replacing something existing now uh, what are the uh, most features that you can do activities that you do for uh, electronic solutions in agriculture are precision farming crop monitoring agricultural drones livestock monitoring smart greenhouse we are again monitoring the environment soil management using monitoring sensors water management using water management sensors or water moisture analysis sensors if you look at all of them most of them are monitoring applications only you will monitor and ensure that you are giving the most optimal behavior later so now it is being called rather than iot in agriculture it has now been termed as digital agriculture now these are the terms which are coming across and some things which are most applicable to indian agricultural farming scenarios is precision farming this is a typical template that you could look for to understand what is the kind of farming methodology that is there on the right hand side you will see a template for uh, an open farm a closed farm monitoring center and a greenhouse session so uh, along with all of these you will have water sources also present to ensure what is the availability so if you look at electronics that are present in this small picture right from water level sensors you will have soil moisture sensors weather monitoring information sensors weather then there is wireless power meters and actuators to actuate the pumps and other things sprinklers uh, power for the sprinklers finding out if there is optimal water so there is a sensor in the water there salinity sensor to see if there is equal number of salt or less number of salt then comes uh, soil moisture sensors where you check how much of the soil moisture is there you can keep it 
uh, first six inches of the soil, you can keep another sensor deep down within one or two feet to find out how much of water percolation is happening or only the top soil is being used. Next, you have the greenhouse. In this greenhouse, you will do air humidity monitoring, you will do water monitoring, you will do soil check, you will do light monitoring to see the most appropriate light is present, temperature monitoring, and all of these. Next, to power all these uh, sensors or systems, a lot of solar powered or renewable energy systems are there where flowing water can generate energy from your water or streams or anything. Second, solar energy can be used and wind also can be used. Windmills can be present. So this will be the power supply generators for all of this. And in that center that you have, you can have your local monitoring center. So this is a small gateway. Now, these are all at one place, but all your other information can be tackled remotely. How? Enable communication methodology from the local monitoring center, either through an Ethernet connection or through a Wi-Fi and connect it to the cloud. And once you connect it to the cloud, all the other control mechanisms, which can be either a secondary agricultural site or the central agriculture control center or supervisors or the end user or the farmer itself can monitor it. So this is the template. Uh, where we lack currently, the facilities are having optimal electricity to power all these objects. So finding out a solution, uh, electronic solution is easier than finding out a viable power generation sequence for all these localized people. Right now, our solution that a lot of the startups are building are catered to large farm owners. Now, we have a small farm owner who has limited money overhead to pay to these electronic solutions to make it optimal. So, how can this be is one of the nice challenges that we can look ahead and solve. And if there are academicians who are listening on to this, there are ways that you can integrate multiple solutions and see if there is one viable solution at a viable cost and effort can be built upon. So let me go through some of the case studies uh, of this smart agriculture, specific areas of the precision agriculture that we are seeing and uh, take you through what can be done or what has been done in the recent the past. But for all of these to understand, there has to be a simple architect. Now, like I said, there are two things. One, uh, you will have the sensors and you will have the actuators on one side. After that, you need to have the power supply. For the power supply, it can be uh, the AC power supply right from the grid or you can have a battery-based or renewable energy-based. If you have renewable energy-based systems, you need to have a DC to DC converter to ensure that these are applicable for all the equipment and a battery management system called BMS, which works it. This BMS will now power two items, three items. In fact, that would be the processing and security, the sensors and the connectivity. So you need to have enough power to do all of these. In the processing, you will have microcontrollers in the started uh, early stages and very uh, complex systems can be used for artificial or machine learning based systems. And very important aspect among all of these is the security. And the security is important because it needs to secure the data that is coming from the sensors that is getting processed and that is going to be communicated. So all these needs to be processed. So you'll have a lot of opportunity in low complexity security development such that the count of investment that needs to be done for these uh, applications will become lesser. What are the kind of communications we're looking at? Short range is going to be Bluetooth that is connected then there is NX, NFC for really close communication. If you are looking at 10 to 15 meters, you have the uh, LoRa, or you can have the narrowband IoT. And when you're looking at for wide range, say more than 100 meters, you have the W band connectivity. Beyond that, you have the uh, GPRS uh, connectivity or your Ethernet connectivity can be done in the line. Then the Wi Fi can come into the picture. So this would be for next longer communication. And even longer communication will use your communication. 
which can be called long distance information transfer. Another new aspect that you can always use in your application or get feedback is the GNSS, meaning you can utilize it for the satellite based checks. And this satellite based checks will be very beneficial when you are looking at an extremely large scale of application. I will go through one example next. Uh, Dr. Javed, I have a question on the previous slide. Yes. Uh, when we talk about the connectivity, this uh, LP van, Bluetooth is all about connecting sensors to the uh, some sort of gateway. Correct. And how will connect the gateway uh, uh, to the command center? If you are doing everything remotely, we need um, you know 4G, 5G connection. Correct. For small farmers, uh, will it be a viable solution to use uh, 4G, 5G connections? Or is, there, is there any uh, scheme from the government they can provide some sort of subsidized rate uh, for the small farmers? Uh, government has taken some initiative. I do not exactly. Oh, your voice is not very clear. Surely, you know, the government of some and government of... Is it better now? Uh, better yes so the uh, i am not sure about other governments but i've heard from government of telangana i've heard from government of meghalaya and assam where they have said they can subsidize uh, a mobile connectivity because that would suffice by giving a 5g connection so mm -hmm. if you can give a mobile connectivity to your gateway that would suffice and they are finding means and ways to see that from a farm if you can attach a SIM card enabled uh, TSM connection, right? mm -hmm. TSM connection, and that TSM connection will speak to the nearest uh, control center, where it can be say within 10 kilometers. So for each 10 kilometer area, you can have a control center, and that will be further networked. This that control kind center of, is uh, uh... methodology is viable. Mm -hmm. You can have it as a gram panchayat level or a village level and each gram panchayat now are being digitally connected either through optic fiber cable or through 5G. So you will now be back connected all the way up to the state level or central level through this uh, digital connectivity. So one, one more question. This command and control center is run by whom? Is it run by the government or we have to do it? Uh, small farmers will have to do it themselves. There are two options. One, you can use the government as same facilities, or you can do a private one for your local work. But if you want data access to the central network, then you will have to uh, connect, or they might give you some facility that your privately owned one can connect it for data access. You can send the data and receive data based upon how you could like to use it. So the modalities are dependent on how much or how dense that area is and how, how many centers are located. Okay, thank you. Thank you, yeah. Any other questions? Okay, so let's proceed. So uh, we, will, we have spent quite some time on this one. So we will look at how these eight items are uh, utilized and uh, how they are going to, uh, how, can, uh, how they can be taken forward in the agricultural scheme. There are three categorized items that I have done. So one thing is the central one is where we will start off with, where you do is data collection. From all the sensors that you have, all the collect data, and now based upon the analysis that you do and based upon the logic that you apply, you can now make adjustment to what is the crop input. Crop input can be the kind of seeds that you use, the kind of water that is used, manure quantity that can be used, or if there is any other protection, uh, disease, uh, medicines to protect from diseases, that can be checked. So this is on the input side. Second, you can look at the precision agriculture, where you want to try and control the environment. And with environment, you will try and do water, air, and pest control. And after this, when you're trying to harvest, you can use mechanized harvesting or an optimal harvesting methodology can be designed depending upon what is the crop and what is the size of the farm that can be done. But for all the others, not controlled, whether it is a small farm or a large farm, the services are being offered for farming drones, where you can monitor the crops and livestock 
by using a drone use image processing and do a lot of plant count 3d mapping soil temperature monitoring that you can do and this one can be done at bulk for all but data can be shared depending upon which farmer asks for it so this one is uh, now happy coming as a saas methodology where you are doing uh, drone flight as a service and that data that you have and the processed data that you can get as a service so this is a new methodology people are using and this is being used in banks to by to check if the person who has availed a loan from the bank has got the help to provide or repay the bank loan or is it going to be an npa so this can be easily done by the banks and banks in utilize this service by offered by other people so these are the three uh, major classification that i would be talking today first one is crop health management and monitoring so this is an old data from 2020 where we are looking at global crop land monitoring and this is done using a satellite and what we see highlighted here in the is the punjab up bihar and the bengal areas being highlighted for their crop and if you look at it these are the crop has been highlighted depending upon the data and understanding what is the harvesting pattern the government has identified that harvest in the month of april will be spread about in four weeks and they are colored as follows the entire gangetic plain spreading in red can happen in the first week the uh, uttaranchal nearby uttarakhand areas all the way till himachal will have in the second week the third week will be in the punjab area and the beyond uh, in the last week is going to be the belt around the bengal and bihar area so this will allow uh, information to come across to the granaries the government held granaries the food corporation of india has granaries everywhere and that will allow them to estimate what is the farmers harvest is going to come and how much of it can get uh, transported to us and what is the kind of arrangement that we need to do what is the uh, amount of hectares of land that is going to be farmed and harvested and what was this will allow them to preemptively keep the granary ready and stock support system ready it will also help them to plan that instead of going to a central granary of the country they can have a distributed system where locally within their own states within their own districts they can control them and only the excess ones which cannot be held can go to the central directory or granary one main important that you can factor that this particular study did was to understand what is the residue fires if you know uh, delhi and punjab right now are very prominent to show what is the poor air quality because of this double burning happens that Uh, in the neighboring states of haryana and punjab affecting delhi so if you look at this particular uh, study you will find out what is the number of fire count so this can be done using a satellite sensor where when the temp localized temperature of a certain area goes up you will see a spike in that particular area and that will become a red spike indicating that there is a fire now this information when you check on a satellite remotely monitored you can easily find out how many fires are being lit by the farmers in this place to burn the excess stubble and how much this air quality can get impacted okay and that you can correlate with the amount of harvest that has happened the more dense and longer running you will know that that is the air quality will be higher burning rate will be more you will have large volumes also correct so this predictivity on the air quality can be done and associated with what is the amount of rice production or wheat production happening in that season so you have a direct and an indirect application second uh, imaging imaging is used for uh, remote irrigation very easily and we have got different kinds of imaging and this particular one is looking at various spectral in the imaging quality not just the visible spectrum where you have a photograph being taken from a camera this will be a hyperspectral or multi spectral camera where you can check what is the temperature of the area where you can check what are the various other spectra that you can pull up this will tell you 
depending upon the heat signatures that are present on the amount of heat present in the area or the dryness of the soil or what is the remote irrigation checks that you can do and see how much of a water source and water distribution can be done and controlled with sprinkler system or water uh, water streams into the field or canals in bigger field areas next you will look at uh, another form of uh, monitoring which is called the livestock monitoring where you check they are always livestock grows hand in hand along with farming hand in hand along with the farmers so a farmer will generally have two types of revenue streams coming and also livelihood in this particular case you can have it uh, one session for the farmers for one area where the information is going to come from the cloud after you go and download the farmer can load the data and farmer can also download the data upload and download happens and he can take appropriate care measures for them at the field you you have different kinds of livestock and for each of those livestock you can have different kinds of monitoring first is you can keep a count of how many uh, animals are there after that you can find out what is the local temperature that is being used is it needed to be temperature controlled or not and if you look at if you look at just the amount of sensors that are being highlighted in this green box containing the field which are those here you can see you can see a temperature controlled system where an air conditioner or an air humidifier is present to understand what is the temperature humidity of this uh, room second you can uh, different kind of a temperature control is this one you can using fans and you can turn on and turn off the fans depending upon what is the heat or temperature present you can also add a cctv camera which will help you to check what is the actual movement or actual count so this will also serve as two things uh, security as well as uh, keeping account of if there are any rogue activity there now all this information can be transmitted through the to the cloud and finally to the farmer who on its monitoring device can check and give appropriate care and take care of his livestock so if you understand this is a control system and it is a feedback loop it can be a negative feedback loop or a positive feedback loop depending upon how much activity or how much uh, response is needed from the farmer now when we spoke about motion sensors this is something called a geofence wherein you place a sensor to creating a fence like activity where you do not have a physical fence placed which uh, predicts whether the people or the livestock are going in and out of your known area and going into the unknown area space it also helps you to gps uh, tag all these animals to keep their count keep what is the range of distance that they are traveling and also to ensure that animals are not going out of your recognized zone in the night because theft when it happens you will know that it typically happens in the dark of the night in the day time you will get uh, information about the dogs or animals or in some cases when you are closer to the forest wolf or fox if they are available these predatory animals can come and attack the uh, livestock so that also can be monitored with the fence knowing if all your known subjects are present within the geofence and if an unknown subject enters you know that this is an unknown person and it can be tracked or when the known subject is traveling out of the geofence you can know to track it and take it forward so that can be done uh, geofence uh, sorry geofence and this can be tracked either through a gps for a very large areas or rfid for enclosed spaces the next three case studies uh, i will talk about are done by a company uh, by name fluxchain and they have been at least operational for four years uh, i believe and if you look at they have three solutions that they have first one is energy management and in energy management they wanted to create a microgrid communication for uh, uh, housing system or a very close hamlets which are there very much internal to the forest in north karnataka or in the paris areas of karnataka and they built about to the small schematic saying 
you will have a grid for solar panels or PV or uh, windmills that will supply and power the battery. And using this battery and other solar panels with a uh, good battery management system, you can deliver power to those houses which do not have a power. And this can be a metered connection. So this is a quick example of uh, the system where you have uh, the control monitoring system uh, kept at a central location within that hamlet where you have all the power monitoring happening. And weekly ones or uh, bi-weekly ones, a person can come and monitor the data and change the parameters of how the power is being delivered. You, the main power uh, source uh, could be the solar and windmill, and you can have an appropriate distribution system for the nearest hamlets. Using this distribution system, you can understand and see what is the data generated and what is the analysis that can be done, and also understand what is the peak activity. Uh, reduce the peak activity so that you can have more beneficial operation in the system. Second is water management. So uh, this, if I remember, was implemented by Fluxgen in a, a company where they have to manage the amount of water. So they had five uh, large water collection centers. One was an overhead tank. Second were two domestic sums underground, and there are two fire hydrant sums. Now, since you are an industry, having water for the fire hydrants is a necessity. So you need to control all of these and check. So appropriate sensing and mechanisms were put to understand that if there is green light or red light, you understand whether it is on condition or is it off condition. And then check various levels that you can have. They had a very nice dashboard where they found out uh, with color they were able to represent saying what is the level in the number of meters in height that you have and also volume. You could check what is the uh, water flow monitoring, level monitoring, build appropriate flow charts for the control, find the total thresholds, uh, define the threshold limits for each one of them before they can be done. Or if there is anything different, is there an alert system that can be initiated? So here uh, is a photographs of the particular installation that happened. And here is a cartoon of the plant where you say the overhead tanks, you have the two uh, fire hydrant ones which are present closer and the underground sums which are present under this system. And you can monitor all of them remotely using this dashboard. If, if you look at it, uh, there is a sensor box. So this box that you see with three dots and a central location, this is their uh, monitoring box. And that they have ensured that that's powered through the solar cell. They don't have to give any other electric connection elsewhere. This allows them to place it at any accessible place where there is solar uh, irradiance and you are not dependent by wires drawn all the way from a central power supply. Now, we, there is a, another case study where they did energy and water management in a particular place. So this is particularly for houses or uh, large houses where you can do both of them. This is, can be a, for a domestic solution rather than an industrial solution. So in your house, you can have various light sensors and motion sensors, which allow you to turn on and turn off the light, depending upon what can be done and how water can be managed, depending upon what is the loss. And each of these, when you integrate it into a single place, you have both an energy and a water manager for domestic purposes. So uh, any questions before, uh, after seeing these kind of energy and water management other solutions before we go into the drones? Yeah, Dr. Javad, I have a question here again. This FlexGen solution, uh, is, is, uh, is it a vendor that provides the end-to-end -end solution with the platform as well as the sensors, or it's only uh, um, a platform? No, they are an end-to-end -end solution provider, and you can uh, reach out to them. Uh, and they have multiple solutions uh, that are present and they are very customizable for the requirements. So they are not, they provide the platform, end to end solutions, sensors, actuators, meters, uh, all the uh, connectivity solutions. They have a complete package available. And there are many such companies who are uh, doing this. Okay, thank you. Sure. So, uh, Drones are uh, not just useful for surveillance, not just useful for entertainment. And for people who are in Bangalore, you would have recently seen a drone show done by IKEA. 
where they use drones to create shapes and create patterns with them. All these are basically algorithms that they've used and use something called drone swarms to perform a particular activity. We can use one or more of these uh, drones for monitoring. And uh, the most common monitoring that we can do with uh, a thermal camera and a regular uh, camera, visual uh, spectrum camera is, find out what is the health of your farm. It can be a small, be a large farm. And the time of flight for the drone and the amount of image data captured or a video data captured, it can be easily translated or monetized to give farm information for health of the farm to understand what it is. And it also helps you to understand a simple aerial survey of how the farm is looking at the various ends that you have. Using drones, right now you are seeing a lot of farm survey and analysis being done, uh, even in India, not just limited to the Western world. Uh, in India, many of the solutions are being happening. Uh, I have a friend in Mumbai who works uh, for a bank. And he recently informed that they are using these farm survey drones. They are, or they are calling for people uh, to provide the service of a farm survey drone and perform a farm survey of a known farmer who has taken a loan from them or who is going to take a loan from them so they can do an assessment whether can we give a loan and will this person be able to give back. Second survey is not just farm, even when you're doing any small uh, industry that you're going to set up with the food processing and others, then these drones can go monitor it and see what is the uh, survey uh, and come back and give information to the surveyors. These surveyors can prepare the report and submit to the bank and see what is the benefit. This will allow them to have an overview. Otherwise, generally the surveyors typically have to do a lot of walking and they will have to do a lot of manual effort into this. But with these drones, they can do uh, sitting in a report location or in one location when they go and monitor 10 other places and come back with the video feed and do the analysis according to them. So uh, what is the analysis that they can do? They can produce a 3D map. They can identify various seed planting patterns and monitor the irrigation. And when you're doing planting, you can use some of these drones to shoot the pods. What are pods? Pods are small balls containing manure, containing the seeds, healthy seeds, and containing enough nutrients for that growth, all bundled up into a small ball, and they can shoot this at places where you want to seed it. Currently, uh, along with this, this is being used for afforestation, where in India, where there are a lot of water basins, river beds which get dried in summer, but get activated in uh, rainy season with some amount of moisture. Pods can be added in those places to enhance forest growth and see if it will work. So dense afforestation patterns also can be used using uh, drones and these robots. When this is a most effective uh, solution with uh, even very small farmers can use it. So you can use this to scan the ground and to spray the appropriate manure or the right amount of uh, liquid for our medicines that are needed to protect the plants. You don't need to have uh, urea or other chemicals. They also can be used. But this makes a simpler effort. And different sized drones can be used for different sizes of weights to be carried as well as what is the area that needs to get covered. So uh, with these uh, drones, uh, I will take a set of questions before I move to the next topic is post harvest management and the courses that are offered. Any questions here? Okay, uh, in that case, uh, let me go ahead and give you this information that uh, the Food and Safety Administration from the Department of Health, Government of Manipur, has now started off an excellent, really excellent course offered on Swayam for interdisciplinary science and techniques applied to agricultural commodities after harvest. Okay, so here you can have a lot of skill sets gained to the farmers 
or to the other people who are working in the agricultural spectrum where you can talk about harvest preservation harvest conservation quality control processing packaging storage distribution marketing and utilization so this entire chain of food post harvest food control is being offered as a wonderful program and uh, the course of the program is called the uh, course code is cec20 this code ag02 so this is the course uh, do have a look at it and it is uh, a very nice initiative from the government and they are utilizing this and here in this particular course you will also understand that in hilly regions and in mountainous regions what are the various kinds of methods can be used for farming and also what is the kind of uh, post harvest management that can be done uh, depending upon the local uh, environment studies and outside environment studies after reading that uh, i found uh, some more takeaways and huge applications that we have first there are seven or eight items which were there first of all you can understand what is the maturity and ripening process for each of these fruits vegetables in different temperature conditions and how temperature and humidity plays a huge role in speeding or slowing down this process second what are the factors responsible for the deterioration of fruits and what are the factors affecting the growth of necessary and good microorganisms and bad microorganisms and the corresponding control measures this Uh, is essentially these two areas are very beneficial because up to 20 25% of grain that are being stored in our granary and other cool centers get lost because of in is a uncontrolled growth of microorganisms or deterioration process which is uh, not monitored so by appropriate monitoring you can reduce the amount of wastage and increase the total throughput after that you have uh, treatments which are need to be done for pre cooling and pre storage right so before you cool any food product what needs to be done and before you store them what needs to be done it could be dry storage wet storage or temperature control storage either way next comes cold preservation and processing and heat preservation and processing both segments on there finally alcoholic and non alcoholic fruit beverages and their work and how we can you reduce spoilage of canned products because a lot of products when they get canned a some amount of preservatives need to be added can we find alternatives of it or can we find to give a longer shelf life of these canned products or ensure that all canned products within their shelf life period get utilized get marketed and be used so the takeaway i just want to give uh, here is a three point takeaway all the above mentioned applications for the last 35 40 minutes that you have spoken are all sensor driven and they need to have a two degree of sensor outputs remember whatever sensors you placed unless you monitor them and your feedback the sensor data is a moot point in that case so the having the controlled loop is most important electricity is going to be the bottleneck here so finding necessity uh, of having a backup power is important or if you can use renewable power solutions so that there is dependency on electricity goes away will be a great thing for all of these uh, two aspects are important with agriculture water and energy management so finding out what are the energy management systems we have water management systems you have and how can you scale them for various farm loads small farm medium farm large farm very large farms this can you can play a critical role there is one more wonderful methodology that you can follow is if you are an aggregator meaning if you can be a person who can aggregate multiple farms of small small land owners and integrate that into one single large land and ensure that all the stakeholders are taken care of then that particular system allows you to have a better throughput because you are control and your uh, products that needs to be applied for the entire farm will be given out and you will have a better takeaway uh, when you do a harvest so 
i think with that i will uh, take you through uh, conclude that data with regards to farming and talk about where are the jobs where is the money and where is the research involved so before that uh, any questions not let me go through uh, you would have seen uh, me mentioning about one item very commonly in the next place and that is data if you see the amount of uh, the information that the sensor gives you is data what is being processed is data what is the processed information given back to the actuators is data so everywhere there is data and it is the data management that we do is where plenty of jobs are here is where the solution aspect comes into picture the farmer may not be very much involved with this data farmer is worried about what is the outcome of this data so this is where all the jobs are this is where currently the money is and all the startups are working around with this data and the connectivity of this data so you have uh, money involved in data generation collection transportation storage and analysis all these five aspects have data in them this is all considered uh, taken into perspective with respect to an application find out what are the security measures needed for this data and look at it so just to show you uh, more in the market for all of the item on farm you have people working data the digital have got many many countries then there is plant data analysis then there are sensors robotics and drones what is the animal data in your farm what are the new next generation farms that needs to be built and for these next generation farms what is the farm management software that you have how do you manage these farms how do you take it off and then for all of these you have a marketplace where you want to go sell these so you have a lot of aggregators coming in who are doing the macro and micro economics of understanding logistics transportation etc and then there is a huge huge in incentive in precision agriculture and predictive analysis for all these companies so these these might be very small farms small companies but if you look at it the market is too big and you have a similar market in india to leverage on right so if you can build uh, a similar network of companies at various strata uh, right from the farmer level to the data level to the data analysis level then to the provider level the government level the farm level farm panchayat level societies everybody is looking forward for solutions and if you can have the right solution mapped out designed and positioned monetarily and with a nice business model you will really see good returns in uh, agriculture in the next uh, coming decade so uh, right now we have seen the uh, evolution of data for agriculture where a lot of data connectivity data analysis and access is being done our next immediate challenge going forward is going to be uh, finding out complex analysis and information processing in this data and finally is the value creation that we need to realize what is the true value of connectivity in between all of these security plays a lot of importance you need to have data security at the source because if the source data is bad all the subsequent data analysis will be poor and once these analytics going to access the data that you have collected and kept that will give the second round of analysis that is missing out so having good security at this place gives great feedback on what is the data control that is being looked at so in the anticipated future that we are looking in the next one or two decades is creating value from what the data we have captured from all of these and see if our mechanization if our methods of agriculture can get better now all that said and done it is not a rosy picture right there are many disadvantages of iot's and these are the top four and this each one is a challenge and this gives us an opportunity to build a new system and develop it 
first one electricity mobile phones laptops systems computer systems and internet availability are not there still the rural india is not able to fulfill it second the farmer needs to understand technology and smart agriculture is really not suited for farmlands currently for the current way in which it is being built but in india majority of the farmers are small land owners so here is what we had come across and said if we can aggregate these small land owners to ensure that they all become a unit of a bigger land system where the smart agriculture can be applied then there is a solution going forward and every network that you have whether it is the uh, gsm or the wifi connected networks or the optic fiber uh, connectivity networks each one of them is susceptible to an attack despite whatever is the security measures that you are putting it could be a cyber attack or it could be a simple somebody going and cutting the wires so hardware attack is also possible next the methodology that you used to design develop and maintain the technology is also complex currently the investment that you want to do and the returns that you are expecting there is a big mismatch so how simple can you make the methodology is the point here and uh, like you said keep it simple methodology needs to be followed but each one of these about problem statements is a business waiting to happen and you can definitely use it so uh, i would like to like uh, summarize with these three points saying uh, find uh, find ways to make a better quality product water management can be very efficient ensure uh, soil management because this is the only place food will grow and if you lose this cell soil then you will not get back so from the soil surface down up to 3 to 6 inches is where all the growth happens so to ensure that this soil is protected and you will see a lot of soil movements happen right now taken up by certain individuals or certain companies over the world and bringing in uh, knowledge or awareness about it and that will allow a total holistic easier crop monitoring in the agricultural system thank you now uh, i'm willing to take additional questions or any other points that can be discussed Uh, uh hello this is zubair hello zubair please tell me uh, uh, maybe i missed the starting part uh, uh where is the platform for these analysis and all that it's a, a as a software as a service or how is it actually is it um, because i missed that okay so yeah. there are multiple modalities and that depends upon what is the amount of uh, infrastructure investment that you need you can either keep it purely related to software and keep it in the cloud and do it or if you have enough material to be connected or enough uh, infrastructure available you can have a hardware platform supported with a software platform also to do both of it so right now uh, most of the startups prefer to do it in the cloud because their way of saying it is the cloud can connect to the mobile phone of the farmer and the farmer can get data on his mobile phone as an app so the preferred methodology right now is going to the cloud for the platform for the analysis that is there so what i mean to say is that are there any uh, built in softwares available on the offerings on the cloud or uh, that has uh, to be built the software is what people are building and that is what is the uh, work now those people are uh, willing to license that software for you to use into any of your custom work so there are many open source tools also available there are many licensed tools which many of the software companies or the startups are selling right now in india hope that uh, helps you mr dubai yeah, yeah thank you and along with the drones uh, uh, like um, uh, cameras to monitor the whole area something where video analytics can be used or something is been done there like usually they have trees and towers mm -hmm. wherein you have a continuous monitoring because drone can be used for on and off monitoring right? right but if cameras are used there could be a continuous monitoring of the crop attack you know by birds or anything can be done right is it being true. considered uh no 
the, the point of thing is uh, who considers it the end user who is the end user the farmer can the farmer afford it only then he will even think about using it so getting it getting these solutions to the right price point makes a lot of uh, point right now so consideration can be done but is it economically viable but depending upon that answer people are kind of backing off because you need to have a camera you need to have a storage device to hold all that video monitoring video that needs to be there either on the site or it needs to be at the house and for all of these you need to have 24/7 power supply so in areas where there is no electricity this uh, may not be a viable consideration you getting my point right so there another thing is now there is a, a very simple aspect is there is theft can happen so if somebody steals it away for pursuing a very small personal gratification then your equipment gets lost so a 1000 rupees equipment can be sold off just to get a 100 rupees item later so uh, safety of the equipment as well as investment in the farm is also needed so there are many things taken to be the look, we have to look into before we consider it now just to give you an example if in your house or in your apartment you have a security camera you expect the security camera to have a complete battery power a monitor to monitor it a cpu to have look at control the uh, electricity to look at it all of these are an overhead for a farmer so unless a farmer sees value to invest in this there is no point considering it uh, for them this can be definitely done when there are farms owned by large companies and corporations for their own purposes where they will see value because uh, even if a 5% saving can be done in the farm crop then that can be easily offset with this one so there are means and methods that needs to be uh, looked into how by uh, answer the question yeah thank you assalamu alaikum uh, i am roshan i work for a company called black pepper technologies do you speak up uh, a little please i'm not able to hear you yeah can you hear me now a little better yes okay uh is it audible yes it is okay uh my name is roshan i speak i work for a company called black pepper technologies mm -hmm. i am trying to develop an npk sensor yeah. uh I, i would like to know more about uh, are you working in this in these kinds of uh, sensors uh, so that we could collaborate and work on the same mm -hmm. black pepper technology sounds familiar uh, used to be a lot of people okay i'm not able to hear you uh see now this npk sensor uh, what is the kind of sensor you are building or you are building a sensor interface which uh, does the uh, no, no, no. i'm components. building i'm building i'm building a sensor based on the conductivity uh, permittivity mm -hmm. and the conductivity part of the capacitance okay. considering the conductivity and the conductivity uh, permittivity of the capacitance Correct. Okay. Uh, nice to know. Uh, nice to know somebody from my uh, PhD background speaking about it. So it is very simple. So I worked a lot on capacitor sensors and their interfacing as my part of a PhD, as I spoke about in the lab on chip. Where we okay. did. And uh, the crucial thing that you need to check is having the parallel plates in your uh, capacitor is easy. But yes. what is the material that you keep inside? so the okay. epsilon r which you see the relative permittivity or the relative permeability that you need to look into no 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 no, no. I, you can I, look into I, that so no. that sensor okay give me no, a minute. sorry sorry so yeah. the uh, npk that you need to have that needs to have the appropriate uh, material to adhere it to such that their concentration can be quantified okay right? what is the concentration of nitrogen what is the concentration of phosphorus what is the concentration of potassium that you need to have you need to have appropriate sensite okay that where okay. the sensing material or the npk can go get concentrated on it and that difference in the capacitance will tell you what is the difference in the concentration okay right 
so that difference in the concentration can be converted into an electricity and read out so okay. that is the capacitive sensor that you do so it is a material property for you you need to find okay. what is the right kind of a material that is there and build it and uh, uh, no. Okay. No, what i am trying to do basically is not build a capacitance exactly okay. what you told is correct but i want to pass through some electric field or a frequency mm -hmm. that can actually measure the uh, you know capacitance from the ground itself so my epsilon r will be the ground uh, the soil itself i'm going to have a i'm not going to have a specific capacitance or material built across it so i have a, i got a product from china Mm -hmm. That is costing around eight and a half thousand. Okay. Okay. It's an IP sixty-eight product. Uh, it's an IP sixty-eight. This is an epoxy. I try to, you know, decode the circuit. I open the epoxy and I try to decode the circuit. Mm -hmm. But uh, the entire thing is is basically based on the uh, potential difference. Uh, the entire circuitry shows basically a potential difference that is uh, happening there. So mm -hmm. uh, how how could I you know um, you know build this circuit is what my question is now uh, i have read through papers where uh, you know n p and k they, uh, the ions break down at different voltages when mm -hmm. i uh, i think I, it is at around 0.2 volts and 0.6 volts and 0.9 volts right. giving the current in uh, voltages in stepwise mm -hmm. so i have seen this kind of change that is happening uh, but i require more data into it uh, because my company is very small I'll have to, you know, be getting data. I I believe you will have all these uh, particular data that you've already worked on. So if, if this data is available, building the product will be much easier. And we could product the mark product. Uh, we could sell the product at around 400 to 500 rupees. That is what my target is. After I build it. The uh, idea is fairly simple. See, uh, you're talking about an electric field, right? So you pass yeah. an electric field. Yeah. That exactly is what happens. So there is an electric field applied to the top plate of the capacitor, and the field uh -huh. ends at the bottom plate of the capacitor, effectively uh -huh. forming the capacitance there. Okay. So in your case, if the ground is one of the uh, field place where field is ending, there needs uh -huh. to be some place where the field is starting from. Electric. Okay. Field. So uh -huh. you need to find where the starting plate of the field and ending plate of the field. That will okay. give you a capacitive solution. But okay. there are many products which are doing using a vein bridge system, right? Bridge uh -huh. where it is a resistive, where you okay. do not need a field. It, that will be the amount of current that passes through the system there. Suppose you okay. have a sensor, you keep keep the amount of soil or something there. The amount of current that you detect or a field that passes through that, that is the resistive action or capacitive action that you can check. Okay. The idea is very simple. The solution is very simple. Test that the way you market it uh, and where you build it as a compact okay. hand-on product is a challenge. We can yeah. work on it. We can collaborate. Do get back to me. Uh, let us uh, sync up. Sure, sure. I'll do that. I'll do that. Thank uh, you. Black Paper Technologies uh, was Mr. Raja who was there. And uh, Raja was uh, there. Hari uh, was there. Mani Van Man was there. Hari was there. Yeah, Hari is still there. Hari is, Hari is still there, right? Yeah. And then my regards to them. They know me very well. Sure, much. sure. I'll do that. I'll do that. Thank you. Yeah. Raja has left the company. Yes, I have. I have a pair. So uh, I, I might be there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then I think we can collaborate and uh, work further on these sensors, basically. Sure. I hope yeah. their uh, your R and D team, which was building a lot of these USB based projects, uh, is complete because your camera. Uh, I, there no, are many of them. I have visited your office. Okay. And, uh, okay. I I I'm I'm, the, uh, I'm actually leading that entire team right now. There's nobody here. Okay, I visited your office. I didn't get a chance. 2019. Probably. Oh, I didn't get a chance to meet you. Tonight. We can uh, we can collaborate. Sure, nice sure. talking to you, Raj. Nice talking. Yeah. I think uh, let us sync up offline and have a look. Uh, how we can sure sure. Work. I'll do that. I'll do that. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Inshallah. Sure. Uh, any other questions? Uh, Dr. Javed, this is Amin calling from Jodhpur. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, Mr. Amin. Uh, this was, uh, I would like to say, a wonderful session. And thing is that ke, <coughs> it is a need of R also. Now, the technology ka emergence ho raha hai, usko kis se hum grassroots level. Ja sakte and I have a project for this project. I have a little bit of work on this project. I have a little bit of work on this project. I find it that 
माशाला वॉट्स ओवर वी आर लुकिंग टू इम्प्लीमेंट दिस प्रोजेक्ट तो आप लोग ऑलरेडी उस पर बहुत आगे तक काम कर चुके हैं वी आर वर्किंग ऑन द पॉलिसी लेवल हम गवर्नमेंट के साथ कुछ काम कर रहे हैं तो अभी मौलाना आजाद यूनिवर्सिटी जोधपुर में अहमदुल्ला दिस इज अ फर्स्ट प्राइवेट यूनिवर्सिटी अक्रॉस इंडिया जिसको आर पी टी ओ सेटअप करने का लाइसेंस गवर्नमेंट से मिला है सो वी कैन ट्रेन द वी कैन ट्रेन द ड्रोन पायलट्स अलहमदुल्ला तो विद इन कपल ऑफ डेज अभी जो उसकी और रिक्वायरमेंट्स है वो पूरी हो जाएंगी तो देन वी विल बी ऑन द गवर्नमेंट वेबसाइट Uh, उसका फीस वगैरह पूरा हो गया सब अप्रूवल्स वगैरह आ गए एयरपोर्ट्स वगैरह सब अप्रूवल्स हो गए माशाल्लाह सो so, uh, उसके लिए मैं कल इंशाल्लाह आपके साथ मेरा टाइम फिक्स है शाम को छह बजे उस पर डिटेल और डिस्कशन करेंगे अभी चूंकि मैं दूसरी भी वर्कशॉप के अंदर था अभी वो भी चल रही है ऑनलाइन uh, लेकिन मुझे लग रहा है कि ये बहुत अच्छा इनिशियटिव हो सकता है हमारा इनशाला हम सब लोग मिलकर काम करें और जैसे अभी uh, शायद uh, जो पहले ब्रदर बोल रहे थे uh, उन्होंने कुछ कंडक्टर्स वगैरह बना रहे हैं चीजें कर रहे हैं तो मौलाना आजाद यूनिवर्सिटी में हम लोग का जो एक विजन है वो ये कि हम क्या इस तरह का इंक्यूबेशन सेंटर स्टैब्लिश कर सकते हैं जहाँ पे कि डिफरेंट वॉक ऑफ लाइफ से लोग आए और उसको चार्ज करें उसको सपोर्ट करें और हम कम्युनिटी के लिए कुछ लो कॉस्ट पे कोई अच्छी चीजें बना सकें तो इसको लेकर इनशाला डिटेल डिस्कशन करेंगे और सब आप सबको एक इन्विटेशन है कि आप जब भी मौका लगे जोधपुर तशरीफ लाइए एक दिन के लिए क्योंकि <laughs> जोधपुर एक जो जोधपुर में यूनिवर्सिटी बनी है माशाला ये बहुत ही मेहनत के बाद बनी है और बहुत ही अलग तरह का इंटरवेंशन है ओके okay. इंशाल्लाह आपसे बात करेंगे कल एनी अदर क्वेश्चंस जी जायद भाई थैंक्स अलॉट फॉर शेयरिंग ऑल योर नॉलेज एंड इनसाइट्स वेरी वंडरफुल सेशन वेरी इनसाइटफुल फर्स्ट लर्न सो मेनी न्यू थिंग्स अबाउट यू माशा थैंक्स टू ऑल दी ऑडियंस ऑल्सो तो ओके जायद भाई इनशा विल कीप ऑन हैविंग डिस्कशन इन थैंक्स Thanks to everyone. So we'll close this session now. Inshallah. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam.